What actually transpired in his study is still a mystery centuries later. Did he have visions or hear voices from beyond? Could he have traveled through time? Two facts are certain. His main inspiration came from a book, De Mysteriis Egyptorum, The Mysteries of Egyptology. And he recorded his visions of the future in the form of quatrains, which are a kind of poem. Nostradamus wrote his quatrains in a mixture of languages, anagrams, symbolism. He devised this code because he was living during the time of the Inquisition, when the very idea of prophecy was forbidden and considered the work of the devil. Scholars deciphering the quatrains claim they may warn of the rise of three antichrists and an apocalyptic final battle before the year 2000. According to some researchers, the first antichrist was a commoner who became emperor of France. Translated, Nostradamus gives us, an emperor will be born near Italy. He will be found less a prince than a butcher. And Nostradamus gives him a name, Pau Ne Laurent or Napalin Roi. Napoleon was the first of three antichrists foreseen by Nostradamus. Each antichrist will take us a step closer to the final battle of Armageddon. Nostradamus had named all three of these antichrists. He called Napoleon Napoleon Roy. It's an anagram, a wordplay on the name Apollon, the angel of the abyss in the book of Revelations. Hundreds of years further into the future, some believe Nostradamus saw the rise of a second antichrist. In one translation, he wrote of this man, from the deepest part of Western Europe, a child will be born to poor people who by his speech will seduce a great multitude. And again, the quatrains offer a name. Adolf Hitler was Nostradamus' second antichrist. And the quatrains surrounding him are remarkable for one thing. Nostradamus uses the word hister not only as an obvious wordplay on Hitler's name, but hister was also the exact ancient word for the Danube River, on the banks of which Hitler grew up. Nostradamus goes on to describe the crooked cross that would become the recognized symbol of Nazism. Of course, history's legacy is that he killed 50 million people and injured about a quarter billion. And in fact, Nostradamus describes the great ovens of the Holocaust. From one translation of the Quatrains, human death through flesh is burned to ashes. Also, he may have foreseen a ghastly event that ended the Second World War. Near the harbors between two cities, there will happen two scourges, the likes of which was never seen before. John Hogue continues his interpretation. Nostradamus describes exactly what that scourge is. The two harbors are Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And the plague doctor of the 16th century describes a pestilence within, a strange disease that kills them, kills so many people. This is radiation. Actually, Nostradamus wrote quite a bit about the atomic bomb. In another quatrain, he referred to the explosion as the stone in the tree, the stone representing the bomb, and the tree representing our visualization of the mushroom cloud. Atomic radiation, the bomb, electricity, radio, submarine and air travel, all of these believed to have been foretold by a man alive in the 16th century. Strangely, much of Nostradamus' prophecy centers on our time, as if his vision of the 20th century was especially clear. In one of his most vivid quatrains, he may have prophesied the untimely death of an American president when he wrote, The great man will be struck down in the day by a thunderbolt. The prophecies concerning the assassination of John Kennedy are among Nostradamus' greatest. Virtually every word of the quatrains ring true. The great man will be struck down in the day by a thunderbolt. From the roof, evil will fall on the great man. Not only did Nostradamus appear to see JFK's assassination, he is believed to have predicted a modern-day psychic would try to warn the doomed young president. This may have been prophet and psychic Gene Dixon. 
the whole sass assassination was revealed to me as though it were a motion picture. Just 10 days before he was leaving for Texas, I said, I'm Gene Dixon, go to the White House and warn the president that he must not go to Texas. If he does, he will be assassinated. And then I gave her the name of the assassin, Oswald. A reading of Nostradamus could also have reassured President Kennedy with his wish to see an American on the moon. He will come to take himself to the corner of Luna. He will be placed on alien land. Some believe Nostradamus perceived that not all such exploration would be successful. Nine will be set apart from the human flock. Their fate will be sealed at the moment of their departure. Dolores Cannon feels this refers to the Challenger disaster. Nostradamus actually predicted the Challenger disaster, but he went even further. He predicted that this would be the turning point in NASA's career. Nostradamus also prophesied what until recently would have been unthinkable, a prediction that has been interpreted as an alliance between the United States and the former Soviet Union. He wrote, the great wall in the east will fall. One day the great powers will become friends. Still, the peace that such an alliance implies may neither be long enough nor strong enough to ensure a peaceful world. No stranger to plagues, Nostradamus foresaw one, unlike any other, that would strike down much of the world in the last half of the last decade of the 20th century. In fact, Nostradamus says that not only will two-thirds of the world be destroyed through this plague, he also says it will decimate the clergy of Mother Church. But Nostradamus's unsettling visions for the 1990s only begin with a plague. He tells us that we will also witness the coming of the third Antichrist. The third and final Antichrist is called by an enigmatic name, Mabus, M-A-B-U-S. The information we have about the third Antichrist is that he was born on February the 4th, 1962, in Israel, in Jerusalem. But he is not a Jew, and he has been raised by an uncle who has put together a group of rich backers. These are the people who will finance his career in the taking over the world and the coming of the Third World War. But he will not make his appearance known until about 1995. According to some interpretations, with his appearance will come great danger. We will be plunged into a war of unspeakable horrors with atomic explosions, chemical warfare, biological warfare, laser warfare, weapons that we don't even think that could possibly exist. And this would climax to the point where the world would be starving to death, to the point that some countries would even turn to cannibalism. But those who believe in these predictions say that even if we are able to either escape or defeat the third Antichrist, we can do neither with nature. Nostradamus predicted three quatrains dealing with disasters for the United States before the 1990s were over. It is believed Nostradamus foresaw boiling volcanoes, blistering winds, furious hurricanes, devastating earthquakes. Nostradamus speaks of a great shifting of the globe over either two sudden jolts in a six-month period or a slow roll which will devastate and undermine entire civilizations. I believe, personally, that he is speaking of May of 2000 simply because it is a time of a grand conjunction of planets, a grand opposition of planets, which could pull gravitational forces to create such an earthquake in California. Again, a warning for our time. Nostradamus writes, in the year 1999 and seven months, the great king of terror will come from the sky. He will resurrect Genghis Khan before and after war rules. The Cold War has seen America and Russia become friends. This was predicted by Nostradamus. And it is a warning. It is the final warning before Armageddon. Russia and America's friendship will be undermined by a Middle Eastern North African source. This will precipitate to a disastrous attack in the year 1999 in July. My interpretation of the famous 1999 quatrain is a little different than the accepted one. 
Nostradamus saw that at the height of the Third World War, there would be a lot of experimental weaponry being used. And one of these was the horrible example of the cloning of armies or the creation of war machines by the manipulation of the chromosomes to create a person who would be a murderer without any morals. It is my opinion, after 20 years of traveling around the world and studying prophecies, that we make prophecy work by being so predictable. We repeat the past in the future. It is also a shared vision of most prophets that there's not much to say about future history after the year 2000. 